Do you want me to go into this one? Rap Ferreira? Yeah, man. Yeah, go for it. So, I wasn't 100% sure as to the full title of this album. I think it's Rap Ferreira, Bob's son, Rap Ferreira in the Garden Level Cafe of the Scallops Hotel. Oh, yeah, I forgot, I forgot about that. I've just been calling it Bob's son, but yeah, I did see that it had like an extended title. I think it's listed on I think it's listed on kinda Spotify and what have you is just rap Ferreira Bob's son. And you'll find it doing that. Um or searching for it like that. Um but anyway, it was released on the first of January two thousand and twenty one on Ruby Yak Yacht. Yacht. Fuck's <laughs> sake. Yes. Uh, yak. Um Ruby Yacht, which is Ferrara's own record label, which is based in Milwaukee, West, West, uh, Wisconsin, uh, is typically stylized as RBYT. The record label is named after his granny and is completely self-owned and self-financed by Ferrara himself and currently operates out of his record store, Soul Folk Records, in Bideford, Maine. Um, the album has 12 songs on it and is approximately 35 minutes and 10 seconds long. Uh, Rap Ferrara's real name is Rory Allen Philip Ferrara, Fer- Fer- Ferrara, and he's went by several different monikers in the past, including Milo, which is typically stylized in all lower case, and also Scallops Hotel. On his band camp page, um, he has described himself variously as the esoteric electro, the black Morpheus, high yellow, the sly rebel, Brother of the Wind in the Wisdom Body, Lord Scipio, the Cosmo Dark, the Bear, aka Boogie Pops, is poet and con artist from nowhere. And I must say that just like the character Morpheus from Greek mytho- mythology, he has certainly cast a spell on me, and I've pretty much listened to this album non stop for two days. Um, really? Yeah, and this. I didn't think this would be my cup of tea, to be honest. Um, but I got really into it. Um, yeah, and I, and I mean, I think yeah, I, re- I really wasn't sure how you would respond to this at I, all. I think I most, I think out of all of these albums, I've probably listened to this one the most. All right. Okay. Um, which. Uh, surprised me just as much as surprised you, man. To be honest, because I think. <laughs> I think, generally speaking, if you were to kind of read about him on, say, the likes of his Wiki, Wikipedia page or kind of other articles online, he's generally characterised as being either a kind of hip-hop or rap artist. Mm-hmm. Um, and with this being his kind of seventh studio album today and kind of not having listened to his other albums, I can't really comment on his earlier work, but I would certainly... I mean, this certainly doesn't feel typical of that genre, in my opinion. Certainly not the mainstream stuff that I've been subjected to over the years. Um, it certainly feels more kind of innovative and experimental. Um, and when I was doing a wee bit of research into the album, I kind of discovered that the album is, in fact, it's kind of somewhat of a concept album. Um, and is a tribute to the late American beat poet and performance artist Bob Kaufman, uh, full name Robert Garnell Kaufman, who is believed to be responsible for coining the term beatnik back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was kind of heavily involved in that kind of artistic and alternative lifestyle of the late 1950s and 60s in New York and San Francisco. Um, so with that in mind, I think there is quite a lot of kind of spoken word poetry and elements of kind of jazz thrown in there as well which I I really enjoyed and kind of yeah I really dug I mean this is I, I'm not hugely familiar with them rap Ferreira either um, I think I'd heard like maybe one or two tracks um, I mean he had an album out last year and I heard the track um, Doldrums from that which, which is similar to, to the sort of stuff on here it's like a laid back sort of jam um but i'm kind of familiar with this sort of scene um it's someone that gets referred to as like 
art rap sometimes. Art rap, okay. Um, so it's it's like like you say it's it's not it's not like traditional hip hop so much or like ra- the stuff you might hear on the radio that kind of sort of thing. And um, no. so there's a there's a there's a, a band that I'm heavily into called Arm and Hammer, um, and and they do sort of weird dark. Um, difficult to listen to um, hip hop I suppose um, and uh, there's there's also like the likes of Open Mike Eagle um, and and they, they they do they sort of push the boundaries of what what hip hop is I suppose um, um, I mean the instrumentation is is sort of unusual the timing can be almost completely offbeat the like you said, the style of rapping is is more like poetry or spoken word, and you mentioned um, uh, what was his name? Bob uh, Kaufman. Bob Kaufman, who's somebody I haven't heard of, but I, I I I you know I didn't know that this was a concept album. Um, although reading it, I found that the the the, the final track is um, is some of his work. Um, or at least I think the lyrics are. Um, but it reminded me of Gil Scott Heron, who's um, you know similarly a sort of beat poet, and he's often cited as the the sort of godfather of rap. So it's definitely there's a lot more in common with the you know, sort of spoken word beat poetry than there there maybe is than sort of traditional. Well, maybe not traditional, but but mainstream. more modern pop mainstream hip. Yeah. Um. But um. Yeah, I'm really really surprised to to. I I I honestly thought you might hate this. No, I mean I probably f- it it did kind of remind me of oh, what was the name of that artist that we covered a few episodes back? Fantastic. Negrito. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. fantastic Negrito. There were there were bits in it that kind of reminded me of that, but I would say I enjoyed I enjoyed this more than than Fantastic Negrito's album. Um, I had to kind of laugh because like the first time I listened to this album, I listened to my newly acquired Amazon Alexa. Mm-hmm. I've been uh, dragged screaming and kicking into the the 21st century um i got given that as uh, part of my christmas and um yeah so i asked alexa to, to to play this song and obviously the kind of first track on the song is um is him uh saying you're listening to bob son now play bob son now turn on bob son activate bob son do bob son and i had a pretty similar experience trying to get my alexa to work um I thought that first part was quite funny, but that's, are, are you are, are you now saying play Bob's son in like an American accent, like play Bob's son, like like he does Retreat so much. Bob's son. Bob's son. <laughs> Dude, Bob's son. My Alexa's going fucking mental <laughs> just now. And I thought I thought that was like a weird improvisation, but it maybe maybe just was them trying to like use the um Alexa or maybe that's the idea. Maybe they just knew that it would be difficult and thought um it would be funny. I don't know. Um uh, yeah, I'm assuming it's kinda of like a known kind of joke um yeah. in reference to that. Um but yeah I, th- I think there's there's so much to say about this album. Um like the second track, the cough bombers return. Like I tried desperately to find out what a cough bomber was, but I, I, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't find out. Um, I couldn't find anything about it on online. Um, but yeah, there was this kind of strange bridge around the the one minute 48, 48 second mark, which for me kind of sounds as if it had came straight out of a kind of Frank Zappa album. It was this kind of weird kind of American show game shtick bit. Um, it kind of doesn't really last very long, but <laughs> it's a bit out there. Um, and then I think after that, he starts. What does he start singing? There's just this kind of vocal refrain of, is it Frinky Little Rappers Must Get? Oh, fuck, what is it? Oh, I can't remember. 
Again, it's a man. little weird. Like there's lots of like, weird bits. This album, which I, I mean, a lot of this album, I do not understand. Like the mm. lyrics, I, I, I don't. And I think it's quite philosophical, um, which is often quite difficult to understand anyway. But like, like you said, on the cough bombers return, I, I think th- these songs they change so much throughout. Like. Yeah. You could almost split these songs into smaller songs. Like it's it's quite it's quite progressive in that in that way. Um, it's like a prog rap album, if that exists. Um, like yeah, um, I mean, you, there's like like a stage musical bit, like like looped harp music, uh, harp music with a with a cool drum beat. That almost sounds like it's changing tempo every few beats, and then this like weird stage musical bit, and then it goes towards the end. It it, it goes back to like a more traditional like nineties jazz rap kind of sound, like something like Jurassic Five, um, something like that. But just all over this album, there's just weird left turns out of nowhere, um. <laughs> Like it's just yeah, he kind of messes with the kind of time signatures quite a lot, and I suppose that that's probably in keeping with that kind of jazz style, isn't it? I mean, um, yeah. that kind of third track, yam ships and flax seeds. Um, you kind of mentioned there that kind of dreamy um, harp sounds. So there's a bit of a return of that. There's an electronic drum beat, kind of a floaty ethereal soundscapes um, with. Um, Ferrara rapping over the top of it. However, again, as we said, kind of messes around with the kind of time signatures um, around the kind of one minute mark. It takes on more of this kind of jazz house cafe feel. Um, we're kind of treated to like these kind of soft drum brushings, a tinkling kind of jazz piano arpeggios. And Ferrara's performance does feel as if it takes on more of a kind of beat, spoken war- word, poetry vibe, um, particularly that bit where he sings. Yes, pain comes in dreams. Ooh, 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 ooh. That for me, that reminded me of the likes of something Tom Waits might have done back in the day. Um, so again, I suppose kind of keeping, uh, keeping in with that idea of it kind of being a beat, beat kind of poetry or performance art type of thing. Um, and then it ends with this voice sample of someone saying, "My only defense against fate is color." Yeah which I discovered is a quote from a guy by the name of Larry Poons. <laughs> that's, that's apparently his real name, uh, who's an American abstract painter. And I, I don't know that much about the quote. I couldn't find the context in which he said it. But as you mentioned, the, there, there's a lot of themes at play here. Um, you mentioned it had been quite a kind of philosophical number. Um, and I thought that that, that audio clip was quite an interesting segue into the next song in the album, album, which is track four, which is, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this properly, but Diogenes on the auction block, um, which opens with Ferrara rapping about stepping up to the auction block and declaring that if he was the type of slave you buy, sorry, he, he is the type of slave that you buy if you need a new master. I could wrap the blues backwards and around myself and tie it in the front, tie it in the front like a karate belt. So I don't know. Larry Poons is, is, is a white guy, white white American guy, but for me, it's, for some reason, I thought maybe that was a comment on ethnicity and I just thought it was interesting that he then talks about being a slave in the next song and that's why I said that I found it was found it was quite an interesting um, segue between the two songs or an interesting kind of bridge between the two songs. Yeah, I think it I think it definitely takes on a different meaning in that in that sort of in that context. context absolutely. Sure. Um, yeah. I so I, I I really like the line um that I read out which is uh, I high kick the moon out of its socket. Just I just think is really really <laughs> really cool. Yeah. Um again I don't know if the two are connected, you know but I'd never heard of Diogenes. Um what that meant, what that was. Um so I decided to do a wee bit of kind of reading into it. Um 
And so Diogenes was a Greek philosopher um, and was apparently one of the founding members of this school of thought, well, the school of thought called cynicism, which apparently has nothing to do with being cynical. I don't know if that's where that word is even derived from. I don't know. Um, but it's in fact a school of thought which proposes that people must live by virtue and in line with nature and that individuals may gain happiness through engaging in rigorous training and outwardly reject all conventional desires for wealth and property. And I thought that if you look at the kind of preceding lyrics, he kind of sings about high kicking the, the moon out of its socket, but then goes on to say that all, all my good times were pursued out of pocket. So I don't know if there's, if that was, in, I'm sure it was intentional, but I'm not intelligent enough to kind of read more into it other than that. But yeah, I certainly think that there's, there's, um, there's quite a lot of different themes and, and what have you being explored here. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> so a, a, a really complex album, mm. um, but there, there are, there are like, uh, it's it's there's a lot of complexity peppered with like just sort of sections of like more traditional hip hop which you can kind of for fans of that kind of thing you can kind of catch on to like on um red guard like, snipers red guard snipers yeah exactly like for the first like maybe half of that it's got like well it's got like a, a sort of sixties sci fi B movie kind of synth, um, or like be something like a Tron or something like that as the main melody. But <laughs> it it still sounds like a, a traditional hip hop song in like the, the like flow and timber of his voice. But then I mean it's a five minute song and after two and a half minutes it just kinda of throws out all the way and becomes like I, I don't know, just it's just something completely different, and it's like uh, there's like a spoken word interlude with a like really sludgy, sort of slow paced outro, which is completely at odds to the the sort of breezy, bright and breezy, lazy Sunday drive kind of first half of the song. It's it's um it's quite bizarre, but but um but enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. So track number five, Red Guard Snipes, that's where he's joined by SB the Moor, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes, I think so. Who I, I mean or is that mm, not sure actually. The, the, there's, a, there's a couple of guest spots on here, but I don't I don't know. I don't recognise them, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so I think um Thinking the song that we're talking about, Red Guard Snipers, that's where I think is that where again, like you said, there's this kind of bright and breezy kind of chorus section where it's like new verbs, new words. No, I'm not going to attempt to sing any more of it. No, I think no, I think I think I think you're right. Yeah, but yeah, um, so the, yeah, there are elements like that. Um, which uh, I suppose fans of the kind of hip hop and genre are more likely to to kind of sink their teeth into um, track number six for me I quite enjoyed that as well kind of sips of ripple wine kind of it's interesting you were kind of talking about the the, the kind of the kind of old fashioned kind of electronic sounds um, I've described this as being kind of opening with this really groovy bass line and almost Night Rider esque spiraling electronics yeah I've said it's like a 70s cop show yeah, well, there we go. <laughs> Feels a bit like that. Um, and but that's fairly short lived, and then Ferrara starts rapping again. Uh, but again, he then starts messing about with the the time signatures again. Um, I can't remember. Is, is this the same song? <laughs> it's a really funny bit. Like I, I laugh. I don't know if it's in this song, but. I laugh every time he sings it, where he's talking about leveling up. I'm pretty sure it's this one. You need to is, le yeah. leveling yes. up or something, which <laughs> I just laugh every time that I hear it. Um, and uh, yeah, there, there's another kind of inclusion of a kind of brief audio clip of another poet by the name of Ted Jones um, introducing one of his poems, um, which I believe is, um, from what I've found, is a short from a short movie called Jazz and Poetry by a guy called Louis Van Gasterton. 
Casterton from 1964, and then there's a return to um, his kind of rap, sort of Ferrara's rap slash poetry, and then it ends with that same recording of Ted Jones then going on to read that poem. Um, and I'm pretty sure he says something along the lines of, if, if you see a man running towards you, speaking out loud, don't run in the opposite direction. He's a poet. And uh, you, you do not need to fear the poet. And I was like, I don't know if that's strictly true, mate. <laughs> It was a bit about this the this uh, guy saying um, if you think you've got talent or something, it's like go and go and go over to those guys working in construction in the street, and when they're on their lunch break, read them some of your poetry, and if they like beat you up, um, you've no talent. But if but if they leave you alone, then maybe you should continue with this as a career. I mean, I'm 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 butchering that entirely. But well, it's, it's, no, but it's pretty much it. That's in the next song, strength. <laughs> which is my it's probably my favourite track in the album and I think there's a clip in it where he's like if you want to be a poet you can't you gotta know you're a poet or something and I couldn't find who says that bit uh, sorry who, who said that but where that kind of audio clip came from um, but yeah I really enjoyed that for me it kind of reminded me certainly like the, the kind of latter end of the song reminded me a bit of Awake off the Doors album American Prayer, which we discussed in our kind of top 20 podcasts, uh, particularly with those kind of Ray Mancherex-esque synth flourishes, which I, I, I kind of really quite enjoyed. Um, but yeah. I mean, <clears throat> there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot we could talk about on this. You could pick... You could you could do loads of research and try and pick apart like all these these songs and try and figure out what all of this means and I don't know if you would ever unravel it um, but it is um, it's a very interesting listen. Absolutely. Um, what did you rate it? Did you give it a rating? Yeah, I've I've given it an eight. So I've given it a strong nine, possibly a ten. <laughs> well, fuck it, man. If that's what, <laughs> fuck that's it. What you think. Yeah, man, I, I really enjoyed it. And like I said, out of all the albums we've we've um, kind of reviewed this time round, this is the one that I keep coming back to, and I've listened to the most. I I don't know how um, how you would get on with. With Arm and Hammer, they there it's a similar like sort of weird time signatures and and sort of changes of pace and direction and stuff. But it's a lot more. Th this is this album's quite bright for the most part. There's the odd bit of like panic and and tension in, in some of the songs, but but um, Arm and Hammer are generally quite oppressive. In the sort of soundscapes, especially on them, um, we've got an album. They had an album out last year, but their their previous one, um, Paraffin, is really really dark, um, but really good. So I don't I don't know. You might get on well with them as well. Um, might check them out. Yeah. Um. Cool. Well, that's that's really surprised me because, like I said, I thought. I thought you would hate this because it's. Can I can I press my golden button and put it into the Hall of Fame? Fuck, of course you can. Fuck it. You can. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get a sound effect or something. Yeah, I need to hook this place up with confetti and <laughs> a clapping audience. <laughs> like like a solitary golden balloon that like rises to the. <laughs> what is it? Um, I, I talked about the Simpsons already, but um. When Homer bowls a perfect game, he bowls he bowls a three hundred, and then um, the guy takes out like a key, and he's like, "Oh, you've bowled a perfect game," and he unlocks the key, and opens up this what you're expecting to be like this massive celebration. It's just like one solitary balloon with three hundred round, and it slowly rises to the <laughs> ceiling. <laughs> there's all there's always a reference to the Simpsons to be found anyway. Okay, well that goes in the That's going in. <laughs> that goes into the Scratch Cast Hall of Fame then. Um yeah, man. Bob's son by Rap Ferreira. 
I think I've called him half a dozen different things throughout the course of that review there. Well, he is. I mean, he's so got that... like five different pseudonyms. Like, um, I think I've just mispronounced him... his name, though, for the most part. I think he called him Black Morpheus. I think it's, it's Black... <laughs> Well, that's that's he describes himself as the Black Morpheus. No, oh. say Morpheus, Orpheus, isn't it? Oh fuck! Because Morpheus, Morpheus is already black. Yeah, he's from the Matrix. Yeah. Uh, edit that back. <laughs> so just say, say Black Orpheus. Black Orpheus. And then I will cut it out and put it in the right place. Black Morpheus, what the fuck? I'm not really going to do that, I'm going to leave the fuck up since. I know you will, I know you will. Uh, <laughs> There's a title for the, the podcast right there. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Morpheus. <laughs> what an insult. Do Bob son. This beat reminds me of angels turning cold. Ruby yachts and burning boats. I could take it to the graveyard by dissecting it. Toothless. Toothless. My, my only defense against fate is color. I'm the type of slave you buy if uh, you uh, need a new master. I could wrap the blues backwards and around myself, tied in the front like a karate belt. New slurs, new birds, new curves, new nouns, new sounds. You don't get hit in the head, you got a future. You know this life is vicious and it seems the only option is to cling to the mind that retains the faculty to dream. Bombiness do not feel pain no matter how much you Bombiness do not use the word square except when you're talking to me. It's not finished. It's finished.